came out of a yellow as well as I'd just like to uh, tell everyone that the program uh, after I speak is going to be Laura hopefully. Uh, we have more mm -hmm. here that did not die from Laura, so we want to make a minion just in the corner. And uh, then we do have uh, entertainment coming later, so you have to all stay here for a little bit. We are having some entertainment, and it's supposed to be here quarter after 10. After that, and then we could bench and leave, but this is the program. I want to thank everyone for attending, and I want to first uh, speak about the genesis and the evolution of this night. Uh, it's not fun, and how we chose this night, and uh, what happened in the past few months. I want to thank my daughter, Javi, uh, as she said, uh, for speaking and representing all the children. As she, as she said, all, all fingers pointed to her, saying that, you know, the Bukhari, you have to do it, and she did a great job, and uh, she, she says she's not a public speaker. Uh, I am not either. So uh, I, I spoke last week at an event, and uh, every joke that I was uh, cracking, nobody was nobody was smiling, nobody was laughing. Couldn't get a chuckle. And then I went on to my far Torah, and nothing. People didn't know who I was, so it was pretty good. I didn't mind. Somebody in the crowd yelled out. Uh, don't quit your day job, and somebody else said, uh, this is his day job, so <laughs> this is it. I, I just want to, uh, mainly for Fagy, we all know the history behind this evening and how it evolved uh, to what it is right now. Uh, Fagy has no idea. Uh, Hanukkah time, and we set up a chat even before Hanukkah time, and we named the chat, and now when we go home, I'll show her the chat uh, that we had, and the family chat, we named it Yom Tov, the chat, and the kids did not know why I named it Yom Tov, and the reason why I named it Yom Tov is because Rabbi Yosef said in the bar in my, my cousin that when he reached 60, he's going to make a birthday par party, and he's going to call that a Vinda Yom Tov, I'm going to make this into a young of marking my birthday, my 60th birthday. So I thought it would be appropriate to call the chat Yom Tov, and that's why we were looking forward to this day for over six months. Fagy thinks that we ignored the, this her birthday. She thinks that we all forgot about it. She mentioned it to me many, many times. You know, she says, I feel like Ralph Cramden, Jackie Gleason, walking into the room. Oh, whoa, what a surprise. <laughs> Just looking and looking for everyone. Every night when she came home, she would look in the closets. I go, what are you doing? Just nothing, nothing. She'd run down to the basement. What are you doing? Just, oh, I left something in the guest house. Uh, Hello, hello, nobody's in the guest house. And she just couldn't believe what was happening. Uh, why the procrastination, why the delay? Well, first of all, that's why we chose this evening. This evening is Pesach Sheni. Pesach Sheni is the time and the theme of the day is makeup dates. That's what the whole idea of Pesach Sheni is about. That if you miss something, there's always time to make it up. So that's why this is one of the reasons, it's only one of the reasons why uh, tonight was chosen because this is the makeup day, uh, the rain day for a missed day. Now, why did we miss the day? Uh, Hanukkah time, I told my children, I said, this is mom's big birthday. We have to be planning something big, something really big. And then I have all the emails and all the text messages on the chat to document exactly what I was saying, what they were saying, and what we originally planned on doing. Uh, and we did have grandiose ideas, and they were flying around the internet, all of the ideas of the children, the grandchildren, and everyone else. And I said the only way we're going to get Fagy off guard, and it would be a true surprise, how are we going to have this veritable surprise where we can really surprise her? Not know. I said, if we do it a month or two in advance. She's going to be looking around end of March or April. She's going to be looking for her party. So the only way this is going to work if we do it in February. And that will really take her by surprise. Everybody said, great idea. This is what we have to do. I was all ready to go. And we were going to do something really big in February. And then, Fagy gets this idea, which I shared with Jaime and Esther at the uh, Greenwald uh, B'nai ben Mitzvah, when we were in Woodmere celebrating the B'nai Mitzvah of Yaakov Arena's children, the, the Basa and Bar Mitzvah, 
And I said to Esther and Heidi, I said, do you know what Faggy plans on doing in a couple of weeks? She goes, watch this. She wants to make a special birthday for Baba. So Esther and Heidi says, so what's wrong with that? Yeah, we're all rallying behind her. We want to do this. I said, no, this is what I want to make her birthday. I said, we're supposed to be making a 60th. We want to do it in February. We want to catch her off guard. You know, so I was thinking, I said, we could just do Baba's birthday and turn the number upside down and we fake it in. Say, surprise, this is really yours. I said, is this going to work? I actually mentioned that to Esther. I said, let Fakey do all the work and let her prepare this big party. And then when she walks in, we're going to say, happy 60th. This is all yours and just turn everything upside down. And they said, no, that will never work. It's not right to have her make her own birthday party. I said, that would really surprise her if she made her own birthday party. But this was in February. And in February, I said, okay, we can't make it in February because we just had this big party, a milestone birthday party for Baba Zazangazun, Shabba Rifus Yama, many, many more. And we made that party for her, so I knew that this wasn't going to happen. So now, when, now we have to find a day. So I said, okay, we'll do it in a couple of weeks. So now, Baruch Hashem, Baruch Hashem, happy to report that uh, Shimshon and Esti got engaged. And then we had many, many other sifras, Baruch Hashem, came near with the entire family. Bakarov and everybody should make simples Bakarov, but uh, then there went March. <laughs> there went March. I said, here we're, we're preparing, a, we were busy preparing a VART, and then we're going to uh, repair in Ohio, and then we had a VART. I said, how's this all going to work? Right after the VART, we're going to have another party, and then it's going to be Erev Pesach. So I said, this is not working. So we had to move it with thinking and thinking hard. And I said, the only time it's going to work is we do it after Pesach, the week after Pesach. And I apologize now publicly to Fakie for putting you through the agony. Because <laughs> every day I heard about this, and she was saying, I can't even believe it. No one even, no, no one even called, and no one even thought about it, no one even sent a card. She was am I, am I not worth at least a card or good wishes or something? And I had to just, you know, for me, this is easy. I had to play. Done. So something I do very, very well <laughs> my entire life, and I and I said, yeah, you know, uh, what can we do? And the truth of the matter is, when we did try to rush it up and do it earlier, then I got busy with all my eye surgeries, and I told the children, and I said, on oh, since since we're not able to get a real party. So what I'm going to do is I'll go away with Ma for Shabbos and we'll pick a destination, we'll go away, and that Sunday suburb will just be us and we'll have a wonderful Shabbos together and a Sunday. What happened was that that Friday is when I had an emergency surgery. And we spent and we spent uh, Ma's birthday in, in the operating room. And and, and I said it was, it was the day before her actual birthday, her Bo Bayon, of her Hebrew birthday, and we were in the operating room. And I said to Faye, and I said, this is unbelievable. I said, we planned on going away and doing something, and look how we're celebrating the, uh, you know, the birthday. And here I am in bed, and you know, I just went through a big surgery, and Faye said to me, well, get out of bed and let's go somewhere. No, no <laughs> she did not. Not at all. And she said, as long as I'm here with you, as long as we can be together, as long as I can give the brothers to all the kids, that's all I want to do on my birthday, and that she was able to do, give all the brothers uh, on, the, on the chat, and I you know, wish everybody all the nachas and simchas. So that is some of the evolution of why you know, we got stuck with this date, and why it got so delayed and, and pushed off till, till now. You know, and uh, and just like you know, when they came before Karish Baruch and they said, you know, oh, we missed the carbon Pesach, Mama Nigara, why should we be deprived? Why can we would not have you know the carbon Pesach? And the Karish Baruch said, I'm going to give you a makeup day. That's what Faye kept saying to herself, Mama Nigara, like, why is this my problem? You know, <laughs> why do I have to be diminished? Why do I have to be deprived? Why can't I have a regular birthday? So. We, we did get the family together finally, and we were able to have a surprise, and we were able to have a, a wonderful party here. And I want to thank everyone for coming to a wonderful party uh, tonight on Pesach Sheni on the theme of the makeup day. Uh, I did buy Faye a wonderful gift, and I was able to give her that gift at least on her actual birthday, so she didn't think that I totally forgot. And uh, because I wasn't able to see well, 
And my eyesight was extremely challenged for the last six weeks. It's been six weeks already. And I stayed up late trying to write some thoughts and ideas that's only going to go directly to her and to our children. I'm not going to share them publicly. And accidentally, because I didn't see exactly what I was doing uh, in my bed from my, from my phone, and I, I had it about, I don't know how many pages it is. Esky will tell you how many pages. She read the whole thing, right? But it's about six, seven pages of a, of a letter that went along with the, with the gift that I gave her, but I did not present the letter to her. I accidentally, though, one page did uh, go to the wrong email address, and it went to Faye. And she woke up in the next morning, she said, do you know that your birthday card <laughs> came to me last night? I said, oh boy, major fail. <laughs> and so I'm supposed to be writing this big long letter and all these ideas, which I do when I have it, and I'm going to just give you a piece of it, uh, the opening lines. Uh, there's so much to say about Faye, and without exaggeration, uh, we, we, could, we could stand here and we could all tell the stories about her. And she could be right in front of us, and we could go on for days, for weeks, for months, just praising Fagi, and we will not transgress the adage of mixas shvacho b'fanov. Whatever we say, whatever we could write, and whatever we could express, it's always going to be mixas shvacho. There's just one story that I did write in the letter that I was very touched by over the last, you know, 36 years. I have many, and in my letter to Fagi, I included many of the stories, and this one I actually did not email to her, so she didn't see it. But I think this really encapsulates her character, her personality, everything about her, and I don't think, uh, I think it's incontrovertible that we'll all understand what the story means to, to us. A few years ago, there was a very popular journalist, an accomplished writer, a, a, a speaker, a motivational, inspirational speaker that went around to different communities, a from woman, and she wrote this book that got a lot of attention, and people in our community heard about this woman. And they wanted to have her give, give a living lecture to the women. And we have this very well-known, scholar slash educator writer uh, humorist coming to Harrison and everyone was quite excited and Faye changed her schedule because she did not go to work that day and she said I have to go to so and so's home home they're hosting this famous speaker writer author Faye goes and Faye was always extremely intimidated by academics she said to me many, many times, she said that people who are accomplished, and people that have PhDs, and people that are Talmidei Chachamim, they have not only the gift to give, and they do this for a living, but there's so much knowledge that they have, that they have just about one small area. She said, how could I ever speak? How could I ever try to lecture or to teach, you're talking about Talmidei Chachamim that were learning in yeshivas for you know, 30 years, you're talking about other people that were in school and college, and she always felt insecure, and she always told me, oh, this is not for me, I don't want to do it, I always was going to turn over the floor to someone else, and you know, she would listen, and she'd always be extremely happy to be a listener, to be in the audience, and to be part of the group that was learning rather than teaching. And she took diligent notes, copious notes, always when, the, when a speaker would come. And this speaker came, and she shared, she shared with the group a catchphrase that's a popular phrase today. I, I don't know if it's in all of psychology. I don't know if it's in the second world, or if it's only in the firm world. However, she spoke about a, a catchphrase. And she spoke to all the women, and this was her message, and her message was that everyone has to have a choice box. Everyone must have a choice box, and you have to prioritize your, li your lives. You can't do everything. She said, you have to decide. You have a busy life. You have children. You have spouses. You have parents. You have grandchildren. You go to work. You go to Shiurim. You have to go to the gym. There's so much going on in your lives. She said, you have to prioritize, and you have to say to yourself, this is what I can do, and this is what I cannot do. Everyone has to focus on a choice box. And this was the theme of her talk, speaking about, quote unquote, the choice box. 
Well, Fady never is outspoken, and in her mild-mannered way, she not only admonished this woman publicly and got up to speak, however, you know, she deracinated this woman in front of everyone that was there, and she said, excuse me, she says, am I hearing you correctly? A choice box? She says, that is a very, very dangerous message. When you give people this out, that they don't have to do certain things, they'll never strive, they'll never try to get greater, they'll never reach their full potential. She said, what type of message is that to tell people that they should have a choice box? You know, they say about the Chafetz Chaim, that the Chafetz Chaim, after spending his entire life, obviously, on a mission on a crusade to fight Lashon Hara, and after, of course, writing his famous Shemiris Halashon, uh, the story goes that the Chavetz Chaim wasn't capable of hearing Lashon Hara. If a person in the room would speak Lashon Hara, so then it wouldn't even penetrate his ears, it would just bounce back like an email going to a, a wrong address. When this woman was talking about a choice box, that's how Fagy understood this message, that it just was going to bounce back, it wasn't even going to penetrate her eardrums. It never went in. She couldn't hear what that means, that you have choices, that you have options. She couldn't understand the, the, the language that this woman used in her choice of words when she said, you cannot do everything. Those words do not exist, not in Fabi's vocabulary, and of course, not in her personality, not in her character, and not in the way she lives her life and all her actions. Fabi believes that you could do everything, and not only does she believe that everyone has to strive and try to do everything, we all know everyone in this room could attest to the fact that yes, Fabi truly does everything. She does it all, and she's not going to ever sleep, and she's not going to feel that she could have this choice box of copying out and saying that I have options and I don't have to do it. We all know that the emails that Fagy sends are going out, of course, at three, four in the morning, and then people think, oh, she's up all night, she's up three, four, or five in the morning, okay, so then she's gonna go to sleep, and she's going to, uh, rest up and go to work at 11 or 12. No. Fagy wakes up, Fagy does not go to sleep, and she watches the sunrise, and then she just continues her next day. And the reason why she continues her next day, and we all know her busy schedule, whether it's going to be going to work, and it's going to be the Stopping, stopping off and, of course, bringing the, the greatest meal home, which is going to be her legendary cutlets and, and other, other foods that she's going to prepare and have that night, and then she's going to prepare for the shiva homes, and then she's going to run to the mall, and then she's going to stay up all night doing her chasadim, as the kids always joke, that when Fagy's at the computer doing all of her work, and you see her doing all of her jobs, She's not getting paid for any of those jobs. And the kids always say she's the one that put the word free into freelance. When, she'll, when they talk about freelance, they mean ma. And she'll just be up doing everyone, every, everyone's facade, whatever is necessary, and she doesn't sleep. And then the next day, the sun rises, and she just continues and goes on and on and on because she doesn't understand what that means, that there is a choice box. She says, you have to keep going, and Akash Baruch is going to help you realize all of your goals, and it's going to happen. And she does it with all of the children. She does it with the grandchildren. She does it with total strangers. We were just sitting at the Pesach table a few weeks ago, and Fagy said, I went into Middleman's. For those of you who do not know, Middleman's is the grocery on Avenue O and Coney Island Avenue, where we've been frequenting for over 40 years. Yeah, over 40 years. And we've been going there, and Fakie has a great relationship with the owners, with the Middleman's. And a woman walked in, and a woman said, I saw you here uh, years ago. I'll never forget, Mrs. Bienenfeld, when you said you're going up to Camp Bekaita, and I said, I have a Sunday. And you said, oh, let me bring all these different foods, and let me bring all the packages, and let's buy this, and let's buy that. And she would let the woman pay, and she took everything. And the woman saw her again recently and said, Wow, you're the one that did all those, all those things for me. Isn't that that's so wonderful? I can never forget what you did. So, 
thing he asks all of our children, she asks me, do we know who this woman is? I don't even know who she is. I don't, I don't remember that, enti that entire incident that she's speaking about, that I brought all that up. She says, I don't know who this woman did. So then Surrey and the other one said, of course you don't remember. You probably did it 10 times that day. You know, you always do it. It's not going to stick out. That wasn't an aberration. That wasn't unusual. That wasn't extraordinary. This is what you just do. Of course, it, we, we, it, for us, or for Fagin, it's a yawn. And she's not thinking about it. The other people are thinking about the impact that she makes on everyone's life, on everyone else's lives. But she herself is doing this for everyone, and she's not doing it as it's a big deal. It's nothing. This is just what she has to do. Whether it's going to be the cooking, whether it's going to be helping the children, and, and as I included in my, my letter to her, I would have never been able to attend a school, a college, I went to every single paper, everything that was done. Of course, I didn't do them, and everything was being done by her, and she was sending it to me, and all of, all of my jobs, and every, every lesson that I had to do while I was teaching, it was all coming from her. Everything came from her, and she, I felt guilty many times because she just wouldn't sleep, and then she just continued the next day as though nothing happened and go on for the next go on for the next day and continue all of her chores and everything that she has to do because she truly believes and lives her life that there is no choice box that doesn't and she had to make that public statement at the time in front of everyone that this is a dangerous message and she always believes and she tells her children the same thing and she tells her grandchildren, she tells me that we all have to try harder and have to do more. There was a famous yachtsman who won a race in, uh, in Australia, Jimmy uh, Spinhill or Spinhill, I've got his name exactly, and he said, I never regretted doing more than I have to do. And that's exactly how Fagy thinks, and that's her psychology, and that's her philosophy in life, that you'll never regret doing more. And if you ever have any doubts if you should do something, then just go and do it. And there's always things for her to do, and she always just does everything. There are many people that we, everyone, of course, we daven hard, we daven all the time for Mashiach. Everyone has their own wish list, for Mashiach, and I hear people speaking about you know, how they want Mashiach to come so badly, and of course there are tsarists in the world, people have tragedies, and people have trouble, and there is pain, and there is sickness, and there is poverty, and of course we know that Mashiach is going to come and make the world perfect, and we won't have all of this pain and poverty, and tragedy, and sickness, and disease, and we all wait for Mashiach to come, and Fagi does also, and Fagi davens for Mashiach every single day, and she says how misguided the world is when she reads the newspapers, and she sees how people avoid of Akash Baruch and morality, and having decent values, and of course she always says, I want Mashiach to come just to correct the world of Achintei Pachtecha, that we should all feel the awe of Akash Baruch Hu. This is one of the reasons why, of course, she davens for Mashiach. But there's something that I heard here from Fegi almost every day, almost every day. And she said, I want Mashiach to come. I need Mashiach to come. I need Mashiach to come right away because I want to go to the base of Middash and bring my carbon toga. I don't hear too many people saying that. And she said, let me just bring that carbon tolda. I owe so much to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. I want to see the Beis HaMikdash built so I could just say to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, thank you, thank you, thank you. Katonti Mikol HaChasodim is what she always says. So on that note, we should always continue to make sukkahs. We should always say Tov Lahodos Lashem. We should always have nachas from all of the children, all of the grandchildren. All of the great grandchildren of Yitzhak Hashem and the great greats and the family, the extended family, and yes, and Mashiach should come and should make the world perfect, because we don't have a choice box. We have to keep working until we see a perfect world, and everyone has to do what they could do to make the world perfect and to keep on working. And this is how Fagi leads her life, and this is what she taught us all to do. The kids always say that they don't know how they're ever going to match the high bar, the high standard that Fagi has set for all of us, but they're doing a fine job because they have the greatest role model, and we all do. I've been very, very blessed 
just to have an Aisha's Chayel, like Fegi, to, to live with such greatness. Fegi always says, when she sees greatness, says, look at these tzaddikim. They're such wonderful, wonderful people. She said, look at the chasadim, look at what they're doing. And she says to me constantly, these people, they are going to be sitting courtside. She says that all the time, look at them, they're going to be courtside. And I agree, they will all be courtside, and they'll be get up, and they'll be cheering and applauding, and they'll be looking at center court, at Fagy. And they'll say, we are courtside, but you are center court. Shmek many simchas, and nachas, take, thank you for everything. And everyone, as I said before, shalim, v'shalachem, shalom. We owe it all to her.